organizations, our whole healthcare organization that we work for. Okay, so are we prepared for this? Absolutely, absolutely. I've been talking to a lot of folks recently about technology management. And I take a fairly holistic, um, fairly generic approach to it in that, um, as my colleagues refer to Carol's color wheel over there, um, and this really can apply whether you're talking about biomed equipment, IT equipment, facilities, um, any kind of equipment, really any kind of technology. You have to assess where you are, where am I, plan where you want to go, budget or figure out how you're going to pay for getting there, actually buy the stuff, the toys, the tools, the technology you need, and then you have to care and feed it for 5 to 25 years, and in some cases longer. And then ultimately, how do you dispose of it? I can get, you guys know this. This is a concept that's not well understood outside of our departments. There's a lot of expertise in buying stuff. Our supply chain colleagues are very skilled there. But they're not real comfortable with how do I assess and plan where I want to go. I don't necessarily understand all these technologies. This. This is information you guys have. This is data you have in your inventory system. This is a place you can plug in and, and, and help that group. Okay? On the disposition side, they've bought a whole bunch of new stuff, and now it's all, all the old stuff stored in your shop. How many of you have suffered that? All the old stuff's in your shop. Yep, we had that problem. How do we get rid of it? Do we donate it? Do we deploy it somewhere else in our health system? Do we sell it? Do we call the junk dealer? What do we do? Okay. Yeah, do we scrap it? Does it have mercury in it? Do I have, do I have environmental issues I going to be more? You guys know these things. You're aware <laughs> of whether it may or may not be an issue. That's expertise you can bring to the table that has direct cost implications for your organization. And then certainly the care and feeding. One of the things I do on a regular basis is work with health systems to look at their existing inventory and forecast out the next three to five years of their purchases. And one of my favorite conversations I walked into a sterile processing area, and I don't remember if it was the director or the manager, but it was a leader in that group said, well, I, I need new sterilizers because mine are all about seven or eight years old. So I took a few really deep breaths so I wouldn't just burst out laughing and um, explained to them that those devices really should be around for like 20, 25 years and that she had infants. <laughs> um, so, but that's expertise you have. They go to conferences and they hear what they hear. But you understand the technology. You understand what can be taken another year, another 10 years. And that's an educational piece you bring to the table that needs to be shared. And helping them anticipate. Quite frankly, she needed car washers. She didn't even talk to me about her car washers. The floor was falling in. I mean, <laughs> she needed serious facilities uh, issues and, and car washers. When we explained this, she, you know, it was, it was a revelation. It was if I would given her the meaning of life. Okay? You guys have what seems like very basic, gosh, I can't believe people don't know this information, but it truly is specific to you that you can share out. Okay. One of the other things, too, um, and, and this is something that um, a number of us kind of just sitting around um, pulled together, and I have to give uh, a big credit to, to Mary Logan in terms of the new president for Amy kind of helping us think this way, but how many of you are familiar with the, the medication, Five Rights of Medication? This came out years ago. All right, homework assignment. Every one of you guys needs to go home tomorrow. You're going to talk to nursing and or pharmacy, and you're going to ask them about the Five Rights of Medication. This has saved countless lives, okay? The right, pa the right patient gets the administration at the right time and the right frequency of the right dose of the right drug through the right route, okay? That's huge. That has saved countless lives, okay? We have something. We were kind of sitting around and we're like, well, you know, we kind of want for technology, which is, is technology used in the right place at the right time in the right manner, with the right people communicating in the right way. How often do you see technology deployed 
folks don't know how to use it, they haven't been adequately trained, or they're using it in a way that it wasn't really designed to be used, creates patient and or staff safety issues. Hmm. Or there's a clinician, and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna single out physicians because I've experienced nurses doing this, where you have a clinician that's using a device perhaps inappropriately <coughs> and nobody's telling them. So like, well, I hope this turns out okay. Um, that, that communication piece. How many times have you been in the room and seen something, technology perhaps not being used right or could be used to fix a problem, but you didn't feel like you could say something? That you, if you will, you don't have a vote at the table. I will tell you today, you need to stand up. You need to be a part of that healthcare team because you are part of that healthcare team. And that culture is changing. The nurses in an OR, for instance, Everybody in that room is allowed to say, stop, whether you're the circulator or whomever, stop, I see a problem. And everybody in the room has to listen. There is no chain of command. Chain of command is everybody is focused on that patient and positive outcomes. If you're in that room, whether it's an ICU room, a procedure room, the ORs, wherever, you see something's wrong, you are part of that team and have a vote. You have a vote. Okay. My corollary to all of this is just because we can doesn't mean we should. This is my favorite one to use with the supply chain and the purchasing folks. Yeah, you can go buy that. It is the coolest thing since sliced bread. It's not going to make any difference in your patient outcomes, though, because it's pretty much like the one you've already got. It's green instead of blue. It's got six dials instead of four. But just because you can doesn't mean you should. Alright, and this is sort of another graph of two which just talks about that impact of technology and how should we use it. We've got old technologies that are being used the same way we've used them for many years. We've got new, old technologies being used in new ways. Good example, electrosurgery. <coughs> used to be we had a generator, right? And we used it for everything, right? How many, I'll call them specialty generators, do you have in your ORs now? I, you know, every time I go into a hospital, I find it well, another one, an another specialty thing that comes. It's just tuned. It's tuned to that procedure with that consumable and that little um, active electrode or whatnot. But the principle of, is, is the same. It's just tightly tuned, okay? So this is an old technology being used in a somewhat different way. New technologies, replacing old technologies. Um, lots of discussion in the respiratory therapy world about the next generation ventilators taking patients from the neonatal. We've got a little bit of that now where you can go from neonatal all the way up through, through, um, through adult patients, invasive and non-invasive, um, and even the liquid technologies for ventilation. Lots of different things changing there. Lots of new technologies that may change the traditional ventilator we have today. Um, and obviously in the imaging world, we're seeing that fairly frequently too, where everything, you know, I'll date myself, everything was done with x-rays, standard radiography. Um, more and more is moving to non-radiation technologies for good reason. Better images, higher quality uh, diagnoses, and less radiation to patients. Okay, the, the bottom graph is just sort of interesting. It, it tracks the introduction of some interesting technologies and the, the track upwards of the cost of healthcare. The question is, did that technology cause that increase or the way we used that technology? the way we deployed it. Probably a little of both. But how, you know, it's sort of that just because we can doesn't mean we should. And how we do it is very important. Okay. 